Are right, you guys, what is going on and welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna be assembling the EJ257 heads. I've already got one assembled that I did off of camera, but I do wanna walk you guys through the process of assembling your heads because if this is something you're gonna be doing and this is your first time doing it, it can be a little intimidating, but doing it yourself can save you a little bit of money. So I've decided I'm gonna break this up into a couple different videos. I'm gonna do one on how to assemble heads, how to calculate valve lash, how to install heads on your car, uh, we already did a timing video, so we don't need to do that one. So this is gonna be broken down into a couple different video segments, just because there's so much information that I don't want to miss anything. So if you guys are doing a lot of this DIY stuff in your garage, you know how to do it. So before we go into assembling the heads, let me show you guys the parts we're working with. I'll link them all down below also, and then we'll get into assembling one of these. So the whole reason we're doing this, if you guys remember, is because we had four bent intake valves on this head. It was this head right here. I've already gone through and I've already assembled the passenger side head here we already have the new valves valve springs retainers valve guides everything in there so that head is already done now with these ones we have the new gsc valve guides in there if i can get this light to show so there are all of our new valve guides all of the valve seats have been recut for our new valves over here they went through they redecked the heads i've got this sitting on a piece of cardboard right now so we are, and they cleaned up the cam journals too, but we're ready to assemble these. So we're gonna be using these Brian Crower uh, retainers for the top. We have the Brian Crower lower valve seats. We have some, what are these, GSC Viton valve seals. We're just using OEM valve keepers. And then for the valves, we have Manly stainless steel performance intake and exhaust valves, both standard size. And then for valve springs, they're just Brian Crower springs because we are running Brian, Crow Brian Crower cams in these heads. So before we even get to assembling these we need to go through and just blow them out with some compressed air some of the like basic tools you guys are going to need is if you guys don't have one of these company 23 valve spring removal tools and valve spring installation tools go ahead grab one i think they're like 60 bucks it'll definitely save your life you're going to be using two of the 10 millimeters out of the cam caps you're going to need a pair of tweezers uh, an allen key and then company 23 gives you the screwdriver you need you're also going to need a mallet a ratchet and a 10 millimeter with a small extension on it so so let's get to building these things. All right, so before we even start assembling anything on here, we need to go through and just blow out any of the oil journals or anything like that in these heads. Yes, the machine shop went through and hot tanked these, but their job is to machine the heads, not fully clean them. So I'm just using some compressed air. I'm just gonna run through here, blow out everything. Once everything's been blown out, we'll go through and we'll start getting the valves in here. Went through and blew everything out. I had a feeling these were already going to be clean. Uh, when I went through and did the first one, I didn't find any metal deposits coming out of the heads or any like chips. So good sign for us. So now that we have the head readily cleaned off at this point, we're gonna start installing the valves. So what we need to do first is flip the head back over to uh, the mating surface side and we can go ahead and start getting our valves in. So when the machine shop went through and machined the valve seats, they did cut the valve seats to these manly valves uh, just to make sure that they would seal properly. They also did a vacuum test just to ensure that. So we shouldn't have any leaks coming from any of our valves. So I'm gonna go through here. What we're gonna wanna do is get a little bit of assembly lube on your finger and you're just gonna wanna grease the them the the them the stem of the valve a little bit just so it's not going in dry you don't need to go like completely ham i probably did a little too much on this one but it'll be fine and then we can just stick them down into the guides and slide them in god that's such a satisfying noise kaplunk kaplunk click kaplunk all right, so now that we have all of our valves just kind of sat in here, uh, you may see a little bit of schmoo on the outside of the valve face, the one that faces the inside of the motor. Uh, don't worry about that. Once we get everything like sealed up, we'll go through here with a rag and some brake clean and just wipe off any of that residue that might be on the valve. So now that the valves are in here, we're going to flip the head over. When we flip the head over, these valves are going to want to slide out. So make sure you do keep your hands on the back side. I'm going to put two rags, one on the inside of each chamber, uh, just to keep the valves from sliding out. And as we go to install everything else on these heads, it'll also soften any impacts that the valves might have instead of hitting against the table or the cardboard with something a little bit softer. 
Nuh uh, you stay in there, valves. So now that we have the valve sat in place, the next thing we need to do is get the valve seals in. So I am using GSC Viton valve seals. Um, they're relatively affordable if you guys are doing this. I think these were like 20, 30 bucks for these valve seals. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a little bit of assembly lube on the inside of the valve seal, get them stuck over all of the stems of the valve, and then we're gonna get them pressed into place. It's not too bad to do. Um, uh, it can be a little bit annoying. You can push these on by hand, by the way. Uh, you might need to put a hand on the back side of the valve, but they go on relatively easily. Bloop. And these valve seals will help keep the valves in place a little bit, uh, so that way they're not gonna be wanting to fall out like left and right when you're doing this. See, and I'm getting assembly lube everywhere, which is all right. Assembly lube wipes off. So now that we've got all of these seals kind of sat in place, here's the fun part. So I do suggest getting a 10 millimeter with a small extension. It fits pretty perfect over the valve seal. Uh, we're gonna go through, just give it a couple love taps with a mallet, no need to go ham and start smacking it. You'll know the valve seal is set in place once the tone of how it sounds changes. And it doesn't hurt to go through and double check your work when doing this. If you gotta go back through and hit them a couple more times, no harm, no foul. So you can hear when it starts tinging, tinging or pinging uh, is when the valve seat is set. So I went through, got them all knocked in. I'm gonna go through one more time just to double check. It doesn't hurt. Um, once those are double checked, we'll start getting everything else assembled. All right, I feel pretty confident that all the valve seats or all the valve seals are in. They all look properly sat. So now that we have those in, we're gonna go through and throw the lower spring retainers on. So these you're gonna have to purchase separate. These do not come with the valves. Um, so do, or they do not come with the springs. Keep that in mind. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of assembly lube thrown on all of these. Uh, I just don't want any hard metal to metal contact if we can avoid it. And a little bit of assembly lube goes a long way. So you're just gonna set those on there. We'll get them all straightened out after I get these all lubed up. And then from there we can start getting the springs on and then here comes the frustrating part soon and if you've ever installed valves and springs you know how annoying this part can be not this part but you'll see you'll see if you don't know okay so now that they're all in there uh, we just need to get them set in their home so all you got to do is just poke them around a little bit with a flathead uh, preferably the company 23 one and they will just sit right in place there's no need to go through there and force them they will go in naturally and happily, I promise. So all of those are now in place. Next up, we're gonna get the springs lubed up and we're only gonna put the springs in on one side to start with. Uh, you'll see why, it's just there's a lot going on when you start getting all the springs shoved in there. So once again, don't be afraid to really get these boys nice and lubed up, because that's what we like. And just we'll just ploop them right there. Just ploop them right down. Is there an orientation for these springs? Uh, no, I couldn't find one. The springs are pretty symmetrical, uh, at least with this Brian Crower set. Some springs may be directional. Um, these ones are not, if you guys are curious, so they can go in either way. You will find that when you're installing some of the valve keepers in here, uh, that sometimes flipping over the spring 180 degrees from like that to that does help a little bit, but um, I think that just might be an alignment issue on my end uh, when I'm going through and installing these. Make sure to finger inside of the spring too. You want to lube all up in there. Don't be afraid with the assembly lube. Assembly lube is your friend. So we've got all of, well, we have four of the valve springs in there. Uh, next up, we need to get the valve hats in there. These are just the pieces that sit right on top. Once again, get them all nice and lubricated uh, and just set them on their homes because this is when the fun part will happen soon. Also, no orientation for these. If you want to orientate them so the logo faces a certain direction, you can. Uh, but I found that just gets a little bit frustrating when you're going through here trying to install all of these. Now comes the fun part. So we have this side, which is our intake side, set up. Now the 
somewhat annoying part here is getting the valve keepers in there, which are going to be, which are going to be these tiny little retaining clips. And these things are what hold the spring down to the valve. So that way it's not just shooting up and flying around everywhere. Now these are only annoying because they don't like to sit in place all the time. Sometimes you'll get one or two of them first try, no problems. And then the third one, you might be stuck on for like 10 or 15 minutes. So this is where this valve spring removal tool comes in handy from company 23. So it's just going to sit up onto our head like so and bolt in. You don't need to like really torque these down. Like you will destroy the threads in your head if you really try to send these and really try to torque them down. There's just no need to. Just get them nice and hand tight. That's all you need. Once they like feel tight, bam, right there. I'm not using any force. As soon as they get tight, and bam, right there, no force. So that guy is now in place. Now this cup of the valve spring removal tool is cut in half. So this is where you're gonna be putting in the keepers when it's sitting up on the valve. I will try to do this in the best orientation I can for you guys. So that way you guys can see what I am doing. So we're gonna get that guy slid underneath. Now you need to make sure that the top hat of the valve is lined up with this tool or else you are going to have a very bad time. You don't wanna damage the valve anyway. So if you're doing this and it looks like it's starting to tighten down and it looks like it's gonna start like hitting the valve with the top hat, uh, back it off, readjust and go again. Like I said, the last thing you wanna do is cause any more damage when you're going to reassemble a new set of heads. So. Just tighten it down. This one's going on pretty evenly, which makes me happy. Now the valve is compressed enough to where we can get the keepers on. So this is where it gets a little frustrating. This is where I've been using tweezers because I can hold the valve keeper in place like so, and then try to like finoodle it in there, which is a huge pain. So let me finoodle with this for like, as long as it takes me, because I don't think you guys want to sit here and watch me try to put this valve keeper in for 25 minutes or however long it's going to take me. Uh, once I get both of these valve keepers in, uh, I'll show you guys what it looks like compared to these ones, and then we'll continue going through the rest of the head. There we go. Bam, there's one side down. So if you need to, you can use the little flathead tip of the screwdriver to guide the valve keeper in. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and they pop out, and then you gotta go back through and do it again. So now that I've taken the tool out, you can see that that valve is in there and it's not going anywhere. So now we need to do this on the other side, uh, and then I'll show you guys what these look like as compared to these ones, and then it's just like cut, copy, paste with the rest of them. Now, keep in mind, sometimes when you're doing this, the valve seat might move, which is what the spring sits on. If that's the case, just pull the valve out, double or pull the spring out, double check. If it's still in place, put it back in and keep going. Uh, like I said, the last thing you wanna do is have that hat right there catch on the valve itself, and then you damage the valve. Your brand new, nice and shiny, perfect valve. Then you're just gonna have a whole bunch of problems. Then it's just a real party. And like I said, some of these are gonna give you a huge pain and they are not going to want to cooperate. Um, it's your job to make sure they cooperate. Oh, you see, just like that. And, it and if it looks like that everything is just too tight on one side, just try rotating things a little bit. Um, sometimes rotating it is all you need to do. And then they become free, nice and free. Now this one isn't wanting to cooperate. So what I'm going to actually do here is pull off the tool go back in here and readjust the spring retainer and top hat piece just to make sure everything is sitting right. Uh, like I said, you don't wanna rush this. You don't wanna force anything. If it looks like that something is going to be damaged or something is going to be broken, uh, just pull off the tool, go back in there, double check everything. Like this guy is not wanting to go on there straight, uh, but we're gonna make it. You have no choice, my friend. You have no choice but to go on there straight. So right there, we are lined up straight. Now, sometimes it does help to put the tool on before, or to put the little spring compressor guy on before you actually put the tool on. Uh, it just gives you a little bit better clearance to try to get it sat on there properly. And then once that's on there, if it doesn't move on you guys like it is on me, you can go ahead and get this guy retightened back down and try again. Sometimes it's just trial and error with these things. Uh, other times it's misalignment and you just gotta go through there, fix whatever the issue is. Uh, and then you can continue your endeavors of fighting with valve keepers because this is by far the most annoying part, I promise.
So that literally took me so long to get that other keeper in that the camera actually stopped recording. So just to give you guys a rundown here, right here we have a full assembly with the valve, the Viton seal, the lower retainer, the spring, the upper retainer, and the valve keepers. On this side we just have the assembly put in here. It's not actually locked in place like it is over here. And then back here, we just have the valves with the Viton seal. So this is relatively easy to do. Uh, it is a little time consuming and it can be a little frustrating to get those valve keepers in, but uh, just keep at it. Like I said, if something feels like it has resistance or it feels like it's not wanting to go in, do not force it. You will more than likely break something. It's, it's literally just patience. Just take your time, go through here. So now that I've shown you guys how to do these, it's literally just cut, copy, and paste through the rest of them. So let me run through here, knock out the rest of these, and then I'll show you guys kind of the next steps there. But we, uh, this is pretty much how you assemble a head. It's not, not all as hard as people make it out to be. All right, you guys, there you have it. There are two fully assembled, well, semi-assembled heads because we don't have the cams or the valve buckets in there or anything like that. So in the next video or an upcoming one, I am gonna be showing you guys how to calculate what valve bucket size you need to go over all of those uh, for the cams because it is going to vary from bucket to bucket if you don't grind the valves. I decided not to grind valves. I decided to go with the valve bucket method. Um, it's just my preferred way. Some people do grind valves. I'm just not a huge fan of it. So I will show you guys how to go through and adjust all of your valve buckets to meet specifications for what you need to do. But assembling just this part, incredibly easy. It's not too bad to do. This was actually my first time doing this. And if I can do it, you guys can do it. So there you go. That is is how you assemble EJ257 heads when it comes to doing the valves, the valve springs, all of that good stuff. Like I said, that was my first time doing it, so if I can do it, you guys can do it, I promise. It's basic tools that you need, uh, with the exception of that one specialty company 23 tool, which is more than affordable at like 50 to $60, somewhere in that price range. So if this video helped you, you know what to do. Go ahead, hit that like button, turn it black, blue, green, yellow, purple, whatever color it turns for you. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button because you don't want to miss out on more stuff like this because I am going to be showing you guys how to calculate bucket size, how to install heads on the block, and a lot more other stuff. You also don't want to miss that car going to the dyno because it's going to be making a lot of, well, I don't know how much power it's going to make. It's going to make some power though. So with that, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies.